Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Norm McKenzie as your host here at Real Estate First Technology. We have your Mr. Dan Gandy as our co-host. Welcome, Dan. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me on. Of course, of course. And we have the one, the only. Welcome to Real Estate First Technology, where you'll get the inside scoop from top producing real estate professionals all around the country, best practices, techniques, and learn about what technology they're using to drive to ensure their success in this world we call real estate. The only Dino, and he is in San Francisco at Compass, top 1% agent, he's on fire. And uh, one of our last guests, actually Ina, she is a listing agent 415 and, and connected us and said, Dino, you gotta get on the podcast. So thank you so much for being on the podcast with us today. Dino. No, thank you, Norman, Dan. Thank you so much for having me. This is a great pleasure. You know, I don't do these things too often, so it's exciting for me. Uh, <laughs> definitely not able to be a part of this process. Yeah, and with, with the shutdown, uh, this gives individuals an opportunity to get some additional exposure and be able to still give back to the community as we want to deep dive into your business and learn what are you doing with technology and also how you're navigating. So we're excited to have you today. No, thank you. No, I'm excited to share. I'm happy to share what I do day to day and how I kind of forecast my business and, and plan for the future. Awesome. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we know you're in San Francisco. We know you're with, with Compass. But what got you into the business? How long have you been in the business? And do you just serve San Francisco? Kind of just give us some context there. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I've been in the business. I've been licensed to, since 2008. So I've uh, been doing it for a good 11, 12 years now. And I moved out here from Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, so I, I grew up in Cleveland. And uh, yeah, from, I, uh, do you have some Midwest roots, Dan? I'm from Canton. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah, Canton McKinley has a great football team, huh? They do. They were my rival. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> cool. No, that's cool. So anyway, um, you know, I got an MBA. I got I had an undergraduate degree in accounting. So I was working in corporate accounting and then I got in my MBA in finance, looking to get into investment banking. And I, I wanted to come out to San Francisco, California, because it was kind of like the Wall Street of the West Coast. Well, I got out here in 08 when the market had turned and they were firing bankers, not really hiring bankers. So I kind of quickly looked at my credentials and what I could do to pivot. And, and my dad was a builder. My dad did construction uh, back in Cleveland and, and built homes and, and had a lot of rental properties. So kind of growing up, I, I knew how to, you know, lay foundation, run electrical, plumbing, hang cabinets, flooring. Yeah. So, you know, my folks were immigrants. So they were very resourceful and uh, very hands-on people. And I learned a lot of that back end stuff, if you will, on the construction side. So I said, look, maybe I'll be a real estate agent. So I got my license within six months of being in San Francisco and I teamed up with a top producing agent uh, and I networked my butt off. I talked to commercial agents, residential agents, leasing agents. I didn't know where I would fit in because I, I had an MBA and I felt with the MBA, I was a little bit more analytical. I could work more on the business side of things. But in 08, 09, there were very little commercial deals taking place. It was more office space leasing, if anything, but everyone was kind of at a standstill. So I found myself in residential, um, which I love. I absolutely adore and love residential real estate. It's, it's, it's very emotional, which I've, I've grown to love. Historically, I was much more uh, analytical and really spreadsheet-based, if you will, kind of a quant jock. Um, but I've really kind of grown into the, the touchy-feely and emotional side of, of buying a home because it very much is very emotional because as we see now during this quarantine period, people are really getting a sense of their space, how they live, you know, uh, how they use their kitchen, their rear yard, if they have one, you know, so it's, these things matter and it's really going to transform the way we live looking ahead. Um, and, and from there, uh, I worked at Cobalt Banker for four years. Then from, from Cobalt Banker, I went on to Vanguard Properties to focus more on the new construction side and with builders and developers. And then Compass came to town and Compass kind of plucked the better agents in the, in the city and said, look, we have something great going on here. We would be a good fit culturally. You should come check us out. And sure enough, I did. And, and I love Compass. I mean, it's all about the agent there. And, and they, they treat agents like we treat clients. They, they put us as agents, number one, and they really support us and they listen to us. So if we have any feedback about the proprietary tools we're using, how we're interfacing with our clients, how we're sharing information, the marketing pieces we're assembling, we share these pieces of, of, of feedback and then they'll make, they'll make edits and adjustments within, within days or weeks. Um, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Sounds like a great company to work for, for sure. <laughs> and uh, they came out of nowhere. I mean, it was like, here they are. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of compass agents that are uh, clients of ours. So it's, it's, oh. they're, 
some they're some of our best i would yeah. say um yeah. very very friendly very hungry and know what yeah. to do so uh in terms of numbers let's talk numbers that's yeah. your day right um let's talk uh production level so your top one percent how many uh buy side sell side did you do last year or this year what Sure. Yeah. So, so I'll tell you historically, historically I was around 27, 28 million, 25 million. But last year I had a breakout year last year. I, I more than doubled my production. I, I did 53.4 million last year. Wow. Yeah, it was incredible. And, and that encompassed 25, uh, 25 transactions. And I'd say 60% of those were on the seller side and about 40% were on the buyer side. Uh, and, you know, typically as a new agent, um, in the business, you tend to work with more buyers just because buyers are more readily available and they're a little bit more new to the market. So they kind of trust someone that they kind of get to know uh, on a personal basis. So uh, as new agents get in, they're usually working with buyers. And then on the seller side, sellers typically look for mature, responsible, kind of proven agents, if you will. And I think through the course of me being in this business for 10, 11, 12 years, I've kind of ingrained myself and, and gained the trust and I've gotten more seller clients to work with me because this is, you know, a home is the biggest asset in, in anyone's portfolio for the most part. So yep. you're really entrusted with a lot. Um, and, and, and I want to say too, the, the, the biggest reason that I've, I've grown because year over year to double your numbers from 26 million to 53.4 is, is virtually impossible. Uh, it really is. It's, it's, especially as a solo agent, I really, I work independently. I don't have a team. I have, an assistant uh, who's licensed, who helps me with broker tours and open houses. And then I have a, a virtual assistant in the Philippines who I absolutely love. She's amazing. She works my hours. Uh, she's available and she helps me on the marketing side and preparation side because there's a lot of operational things that have to get done in the background. But a lot of it, I have a coach. I have a real estate coach. Uh, his name is Steve Scholl and it, performancecoaching.com. And Steve is incredible. I mean, he is just uh, a real go-getter. I mean, he was a linebacker in the NFL. He played in the Super Bowl 17 under Don Shula for the Miami Dolphins. So oh, he is just nice. Yeah, he is an intense guy. He's been around the block. You know, he's co coached more agents in this universe than any other real estate coach, than a Tom Ferry or anyone else that's out there. And 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 you know, he just helps kind of guide you and, and just kind of give you a sense of clarity for me and just the confidence to know that what you're doing is right because mm -hmm. you know i think as agents there's a lot of different directions you can go you can start to do postcards and mailers and cold call and uh do open houses and, and people don't really know where they should go uh in their business or what what is their niche so uh working with steve for almost two years now he's he's really helped empower me to to be the agent that i am today wow in, in terms, let's uh, touch on a little bit of those, uh, the cold calling and the direct mail. So in terms of technology, like what methods are you uh, using to get clients um, that's been, you know, on the top of the list, right? Top ROI. Yeah. So, I mean, given, given my family's construction background, uh, you know, I'm kind of an older school agent, if you will. I, I don't employ too much technology. I, I, I'm really, a, it's a contact sport. You know, real estate is a contact sport. And I think you know, if you want to sell more real estate, you have to talk to more people. And that's, and every single day, when I wake up in the morning, I wake up positive. You have to, you have to live a future present reality. We can talk about more of that later, but you have to wake up positive and ready to go. And for me, you know, I knock on doors. So I literally, I go, I canvas areas, I talk to neighbors, I knock on doors and I introduce myself. And I ask them if, if there's anything on the real estate side that they might need they don't have to be ready to buy or sell, but maybe they need, they need a plumber or an electrician or a handyman to come fix a broken faucet or a, a loose cabinet, um, or they want to refinish some floors. So just creating value, creating service for people and, uh, and really just being available for them. Uh, you know, and, and, and really as, as trite as it might sound, it's really, it's really a numbers game. You know, you, if you want to sell more real estate, you have to talk to more people. Uh, and the more people that know you and know about you, chances are they're going to call you and say, oh, I met this Dino guy. He seemed real nice and trustworthy. Uh, he seems to know the market. Maybe I'll give him a call to see if he can help me give a sense of value in the home or give me an appraisal or put me in touch with a contractor. Nice. Um, that's, that's awesome. And then in automation, I mean, 
I know as you jump from either doubling your production, um, mm -hmm. is there technology automation that you're implementing um, that has helped you, you know, facilitate mm -hmm. a, a more seamless business? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, with Compass, Compass is wonderful because internally we have great support. I mean, I have a marketing advisor that, that when I get a new listing, we try to brand each home uh, like a PR firm. Like say, for example, you create a new widget and you go to your marketing department and you say, look, we have to create excitement and branding and a name and a feel, touch and feel around this product. I take my homes and my new listings to my marketing team and internal marketing advisors and I say, look, how can we position this home to stand out from the others? And so internally within Compass, I sit down with a marketing advisor and we kind of carve out who the buyer is going to be, who we think the buyer is going to be, how should we adjust the interior layout or the paint colors is the easiest way to go, who should stage the home. You know, I have five or six different stagers. Um, so I think processy-wise, just having a great marketing advisor internally, and then I use different you know, we have a transaction coordinator too. So as far as processing the paperwork, getting the disclosure package put together, uh, I have a wonderful transaction coordinator who's very diligent. He com follows compliance with CAR and helps me prepare that paperwork with the seller to make sure that we're disclosing everything that we need to disclose to any prospective buyer. Um, so I think having internal people like that kind of help facilitate. And then I use SendGrid, you know, as far as an email campaign program, I use SendGrid and I send out a weekly email and I think it's good to stay top of mind with people. Uh, so I send out every Saturday morning, I'll send out a weekly news piece about the latest information on the market, whether there's a new high rise going up or there's a new restaurant opening or an eviction claim that's taking place with a landlord. I love that, that campaign. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, and, and that tends to kind of be top of mind. And then I also love LinkedIn. You know, I think LinkedIn for business professionals, I, I tend to, you know, I went to a Jesuit university, so I tried to connect with people who went to other Jesuit universities uh, throughout the country. I think there's about 28 Jesuit universities. So we have a common thread there. Um, and I try to really connect with people uh, because it's, you're trying to be of service to others. You know, we're, in, in the Jesuit motto, men and women for others. And that's really what I try to employ and connect with people because we're very like-minded and, and being of service and helping they don't have to be necessarily less fortunate, but just helping someone with anything that they might be dealing with or, or having a challenge with. So I'd, LinkedIn's been a great tool for me too, um, just to kind of get in front of people and, and, and stay relevant. That's Thank awesome. Yeah, Thank thanks you so much. And uh, I'm going to go a little off script just because of the times that we're in. So is yeah. LinkedIn, because you said as soon as you wake up, I, I love the fact that you said you have that positive mindset. You wake up, you want to mm -hmm. talk to as many people as you can, do the door knocking, circle back. Is there anything I can do to be of service? So now with the whole stay, stand in place, COVID-19, these ordinance, how are you then now touching and reaching people? Is it LinkedIn or are you now more on social media? Like how are you, how are you navigating? You know, that's a great question. That's, that's a great question. I mean, I, I certainly am not doing any door knocking, unfortunately, right now. Uh, you know, it's, it's just messed up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but I, I, I am doing more LinkedIn for sure and uh, being in touch with folks there. And then I'm, I'm following up a lot with past clients. You know, I'm really staying in touch. I think a lot of this, to really be successful in real estate, it's, it's a repeat and referral business. So you really have to take care of your existing clients. And if you really want to excel, you really have to take to heart the fact that it's a repeat and referral business. So what I do is I follow up with past clients regularly. I'll touch base with them. I'll send them something in the mail. Hey, I'm thinking of you. Here's something for your dog or, Hey, congrats on your first baby. Here's something for kids or, you know, kids are us or what have you. Um, but I just always follow up with past clients and current clients and just even with my existing clients, just staying in front of them and being of service and letting them know that I'm available. Um, you know, if they need anything. And then just, you know, when I'm out and about, I, just keeping my eyes peeled. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. Earlier this year, I was, I was door knocking and I, I came across a home uh, here in Noe Valley that was being nearly done in construction. And I went to the house and I, wa not, I went inside. Typically, I just kind of walk in like I own the place because you have to walk in with some conviction. And uh, I walked in the backyard and there was two guys working in landscaping. And I said, hey, who's the owner? Can you share me his information with me do you know if they're going to be moving in or selling and long story short the owner was actually outside in his car on the phone he came out got to talking to him 
and try to get a listing in, in relationship with him, but he had already been talking to a few agents. And then I stayed in touch and we had a, a great rapport. About three weeks later, I got a call from a past client uh, who I met four years ago. And he said, you know, I'm looking for something uh, in the area. Do you know of anything? And I said, actually, I know of something that's exactly what you're looking for. And we got a deal done off market for $6.3 million uh, just by door knocking, just by staying in front of people and just kind of keeping stuff top of mind. Uh, and it was, obviously, it was just when the quarantine period was getting kicked off. Uh, so it was it was incredible how it all came to be. And uh, my client got an incredible deal because it was off market and the way we structured it um, was wonderful. And, and really both buyer and seller were truly happy. So, Wow. That brings up a big good point real quick is that uh, to be a, anyone can sell real estate, right? And put it on the MLS, but to be a really good agent, you mm -hmm. play your database and you play matchmaker. I mm -hmm. have a property or I can find you a property. Let me deep, into my database. Oh, wait, I met somebody. Connect the dots. Play matchmaker. That's how you make the most money. I love it is. It. It's a, yeah, that's right. And that's where you create value. You know, anyone can go on the MLS and look at, you know, run a search and see what comes up and, you know, forward it or whatever. But to really be in the market, that's why real estate's a local business. Um, you want to work with somebody that's local. Look, I don't do much in the North Bay, South Bay, East Bay, you know, unless I have very dear clients who are adamant about working with me. I'm not... I'm a, it's a disservice, frankly, to some degree if I work with them in that market because I'm just not in, in touch as I am with San Francisco. So. Yeah. yeah. And what, what I took from what you said as well is uh, you're always thinking of the opportunity. So you're out there doing what you're doing, but you're looking for opportunity and you're being more of an opportunist instead of just sitting there on your phone or just you know doing other things that doesn't let you see. Like, Oh, there's construction, there's this, there's that. And then you can then put that into your newsletter and tell your, tell your past clients and individuals that are part of your network. And I, and I love that. And I think that uh, being an opportunist is definitely going to help because if you pay attention to the details, that's where you can really start to excel. And one thing that comes up for me is, is you look at people that buy million plus dollar homes. It's all in the details. It's the crown molding. It's the little, it's a little doorknob. It's a little handle. It's a little custom, it's custom that. And that's why I feel a lot of successful realtors as far as yourself are opportunists that look at the bigger picture. They're not so just looking at the numbers or worried or stressed out about why this, why that. Like you said, you wake up in the morning, you're positive and you're seeing these things, you're connecting the dots and then boom, you automatically, that's yeah. awesome. Wow. Yeah, no, it was, and it was God, honestly, it was God's grace, the way the deal came together with the timing and COVID and the quarantine, because now obviously transactionally we're all, we're seeing a good drop 30, 40, 50% in, in volume just because you know, everyone's, there's just some uncertainty and then both on the buyer side and seller side, no one really wants to transact necessarily. So, um, yeah, it'll come back. <laughs> it'll oh. come back. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, there's like yeah. a, Everything is like a pressure cooker right now. And like you haven't pushed the little button to let out the steam. Yeah. So yeah. A, yeah. a lot of it's, a lot of it's confidence as well as my wife and I, a little off script here. My wife and I are actually selling our place here in uh, Hayward and it gets list next week on May 6th and uh, we're still moving forward. We're not going to, you know, think twice about it. And we well, I actually went Dan and I to a meeting this morning for uh, RMA over in Danville area and went to their broker's tour meeting. So they're all online now and, talked about oh. it so you just got to be proactive here okay. so we're getting closer to the end of the show and want to find out so now seeing where you're at and where do you see yourself in the next five years for your business yeah so that's a great question um you know i i i want to expand my team i think i want to create more of a presence and i think too um just getting more into the development side to being more of a developer and, and kind of getting into the construction side just because i know and i understand the how the plan department works and how the building department works. And, and I have so many relationships with, with electricians and plumbers and contractors that uh, it'd be great. And, and it's kind of fun to kind of get involved with a project and kind of reshape it and recarve it. And you're helping the community because there's so many homes. I mean, homes in San Francisco are over hundred years old and there's beautiful Edwardians, Victorians that need, need some attention and love. Uh, and to be able to be a part of that history and to be a part of the renovation and to, to share that with somebody and to have a buyer come in and to really enjoy what you've done and to love it and to make it their home. I mean, it says a lot. So I think for me, I, I'd love to build my real estate practice uh, with quality folks that have, you know, good efficacy, uh, good fundamentals, are very competent, very trustworthy, 
um, and then just kind of get more into the development side of things um, would be would be great. You know, I think this is a lifestyle business, you know, and that's what I love about real estate. It's like, if you're a physician, you know, you go to a cocktail party and you start to talk to somebody and you tell them that you're a physician, they're like, oh, you know what? I've always had this back pain. What do you, you know? So it's like, it's similar to like real estate. You're at a cocktail party and you get to talking and someone learns you're a real estate agent and they'll be like, oh, did you see that house, that trader? What do you think? What did you think about the finishes at that house? And so it's, it's always a constant discussion around it, which is fun. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, last question for me, I really love asking this question is um, what are some one or two tips that you would give an agent that just got licensed to, yeah. to get the ball rolling, get out there and, and make it happen? Well, I think that's a great question, Dan. I think, you know, if, if I were a brand new agent, I think what I would do is I would identify, you know, I would pull a ranking report of the top 10 agents in your market. And I would say, look, who are the top 10 agents? And I would do some background on each individual and see where you culturally fit, maybe top 20 and see where would you culturally fit. And then you need to get in front of that agent and you need to want to join their team and figure out how you can be a part of their team. And if that means working for six months for free or nine months for free, then you do that because that's what I did. And I, I learned so much. Uh, with that top agent, you just, you just, you see more deals, you, you, you meet vendors. I mean, you know who to work with, you know who not to work with on the inspection side, for example, uh, different things with soil, uh, geotechnical, et cetera. There's just so much to learn in this business. I mean, you wear so many hats um, that you want to find out who the top agents are and then try to get in, in their team to do whatever they need you to do. Um, and then I also think just keeping your head on straight. I think, this can be such a lonely business. You know, being a real estate agent can be a very lonely business. You're out there every single day and you don't have, you're not a corporate structure where you go in and you have a manager and you have a subordinate uh, staff associate person that you can kind of bounce ideas off of. So you really have to have your head on straight. And I think you have to read good books. I think, you know, uh, Ryan Holiday is a great author. You know, he wrote Stillness is the Key, Ego is the Enemy. An Obstacle is the Way, you know, three great books. I think if you read Ryan Holiday's books, uh, Joe Dispenza, uh, Becoming Supernatural, he wrote a great book, you know, it just talks about living a future present reality, you know, asking yourself, what do you see yourself doing? Like you asked in five years and kind of living that today. And it's all about emotion. You know, you really have to feel it. You have to feel it now because you have to think greater than you feel, you know, like sometimes you wake up and you're not feeling that great. Well, you have to think greater than that feeling and you have to stay conscious you know 95 percent of what we do we do on autopilot and and i think most people don't realize it but you really have to take a conscious stance in your life and that's where my coach steve schultz helped me a great deal is just taking a conscious stance and really understanding and being self-aware you know and that's becoming conscious and becoming self-aware of what your thoughts are and your thoughts are just your thoughts you know your thoughts aren't necessarily true so you have to recognize that thought, you have to observe that thought, and then just let it go. You know, it, it's kind of one of those things, but Joe Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza is incredible, becoming supernatural. And I think just, you know, real estate can be very lonely business, so just kind of keeping your head on straight and staying positive. And it's, it's a blue sky business. I mean, this is a blue, sky, a blue sky business. You can make as much as you want to make. You can service as many clients as you want to service. Um, it's just, a, it's just comes down to what, how badly do you want it? Uh, and, and where your head's at. So wow. great, great advice, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, That was huge. And, uh, yeah, Dr. Joseph Spenza is pretty, pretty amazing. My wife and I got right. into that and, uh, go ahead, Dan. I was going to say, and you answered the next question. <laughs> question. <laughs> you read our mind, <laughs> but it, when it just seamlessly flows, I like yeah. that. So offline, we'll have to, we'll have to connect there. Uh, you know, so fantastic. You already gave some good books. That's fantastic. And if you want to give any more, you're more than welcome. And the last question from us is, is, uh, you know, what would you like to say in closings for our viewers and listeners out there to, uh, to take from today's uh, episode? No, thank you, Norman, Dan. I mean, really appreciate this opportunity. It, it's been a lot of fun. And, uh, I think, you know, just, just, you know, live life and enjoy yourselves. And I think, you know, whatever is important to you, make it a focus. And I think you can have anything you want. I really, really believe that. Um, so I just encourage everyone to stay positive and just know that we're going to get through whatever it is we're dealing with today. You know, 
it, everything comes to pass and uh, just keep that close and dear to your heart and just know that we'll persevere and uh, there's no reason to, to get down in the dumps about anything. Just, just keep your head up and, uh, and just look on forward, look ahead. So, wow. That's awesome. No, very selfless way to end the episode. We have some that are like, join my team and some of the other things about listings or follow them on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I, I love your approach, you know, cause it's almost like instead of you needing to say something yourself, being more selfless and now i want to say things for you there's his website <laughs> and, Thanks, uh, <laughs> yeah be sure to uh check out dino and uh, follow him on his social media and yeah just thank you so much i really appreciate you being on the show definitely believe that everything happens for a reason you came just from a referral and that's awesome and a lot of this show is just it's just natural it's just it's free-flowing people come on and come and go based off of referrals or social media or connecting with someone so thank you so much for our you know listeners i'm sure they're going to take some good information for today and our viewers. you know anybody too that should be on let it yeah know. i yeah. will no, absolutely dan absolutely yeah. no, i appreciate yeah. it likewise and thanks so much dan for being the co-host today sure and thanks for our listeners and viewers. And we hope that you took something from today's episode that you can apply to your business so you can have more, more success. Wish you all well. Stay safe out there. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for tuning into today's episode. We hope you found value and took something you can apply to your business today. Be sure to join our community on Facebook, Real Estate vs. Technology, all spelled out. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would appreciate it. It's Real Estate Tech. And of course, if you or someone else you know would like to be a part of our show, just go ahead and send us an email. It's re vs. Tech Talk at gmail.com. And we'll see you next week.